thank you very much for watching this video today we're going to do a mock test with emily in wood green emily's been my student since the start um she started probably was it before the second lockdown um yeah i think we had like two lessons in december 2020 or something cool yeah and then obviously lockdown kicked in um and then had to restart Emily's picked it up really quick. Um, she has had another break, uh, reason being. Um, I'm on the UK tour of Les Miserables, so I've been away since October. <laughs> so she's been very busy, uh, to say the least. Um, she only flew back yesterday, I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah, got back yesterday. Yeah, so slight bit of jet lag, um, <laughs> possibly the drinks on the, the flight. How I don't know, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> glad to hear it <laughs> <laughs> so she has had a big gap um, but her test is coming up fairly soon so we're going to do this mock test today and as always this is a test route um, that you could be asked to do um, Fingers crossed it's the real one <laughs> hopefully that's it we will make life a bit easier definitely um, now with regards to Emily Emily is basically I'll let you describe um, your um, I'm missing my right hand I yep. don't know what the actual medical term is, but that's what I have. <laughs> yeah, so what you'll see is sometimes Emily obviously won't be gripping the wheel with the right hand, so sometimes um, she's basically pushing against it, sometimes she's palming the wheel as well. There is absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. I cannot stress that enough. Um, I had a girl recently pass her driving test that is basically missing the hand completely um, and just permanently palmed the steering wheel and still passed her test with absolutely no issues at all, no adaptations being listed and no codes on her license either, which is why we're not going to use any adaptations today because it is less restrictive for Emily in the long run. She won't have to have custom bits put onto her car it makes it a lot easier when it comes to hiring a car as well when you're on holiday and it sounds like you're away quite a lot yeah and also cheaper yeah right exactly Surely the insurance will also take a nice knocking as well well insurance can't change okay, so fine. it's the equalities <laughs> act so they can't basically bump it up because of that okay, okay. <laughs> so same rules apply as always yep. um test lasts for 30 eight, eight, yeah 38 to 40 minutes during that time, one manoeuvre, plus possibly emergency stop. If I say nothing, go straight. Fabulous. Okay, we are going to follow the sat-nav. Um, so I'm going to turn that on to record. Buggy to park on the left, one car left before the red car, please. Emily's distance is actually okay here, but because of all of these uncertain adjustments, it will be a driver fault for position on normal stops. Remember, as long as front and rear wheels are within a drain's width, there is nothing wrong with that. Angle, yes, we are slightly off, but it's not that much of an issue. I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> Drive home and ready. Cool. Great observations here, Emily, and it's good that you kept checking the right mirror as well.
lucky to park anywhere on the left here. Do not go on the pavement, okay, that you can block in both ways. Emily touched the curb there, so that's the driver fault. The position on normal stops. Turn left. Thank you. And drive on when safe to do so, please. Loving these observations. Well done. The eagle eye viewer out there will have noticed that there was not a 40 miles an hour sign. This road was 40 until about a month and a half ago when the speed limit was changed to 30. So if you are doing your test, remember don't just look at the sat nav because the sat nav speed limit may not be correct. They're not recalibrated frequently at all. So you may find that the speed limits are off. Remember, look at the signs, be aware of your surroundings, and then you won't get caught out. Then, go right on the roundabout and take the third exit. And again, Emily demonstrates that she is fully aware of her surroundings and checks her mirrors really well for this lane change. Now, obviously we don't want to be looking at us stuck in traffic for the next few minutes. So we're just going to fast forward this bit. Great demonstration on how to navigate the Great Cambridge Roundabout. Great lane discipline, great mirrors, and very good movement here to go back into the left lane. Really, really well done. After 800 yards, take the exit towards Edmonton, then keep right. <laughs> One of my old clients. <laughs> One of the greatest things about my job is seeing my clients on the road after they've passed their test. And yes, he was in the passenger seat, but I have seen him driving plenty of times before. It is a really great job. I get to meet the most interesting people with people that do the most interesting jobs, have the most interesting histories, families, and I learn just as much from you guys as you learn from me. So. If you are looking to be a driving instructor, it is a great career and I'll be more than happy to talk you through the procedure. for you to go that way <laughs> so that is the end of the independent drive from now on I will give you instructions again okay. take the next road on the left
You will notice the blue light inside the cabin and that's from an ambulance that is behind us. Now, yes, they've got their lights on, the sirens are not on because of the island on our right and the driver knows that it will overcomplicate the situation if they do turn on the sirens. Emily does really well here to stay calm. She moves forward when she has an opportunity and then the ambulance turns on its sirens to proceed. End of the road, turn right. Emily does react here. But she should have been creeping and peeping a little bit further as the visibility to her left was impaired because of a parked car. Because of that, she gets a driver fault for observations at junctions. But obviously, if she didn't stop there, that would have been a serious. So don't be afraid to brake hard or firm because that's what the examiner actually wants. Ideally, though, remember, if you can't see, don't commit. Keep edging forward until you can. So you can see I'm eyeballing her speed here, and the reason for that is because she is slightly over. It's important to remember that the GPS speed at the bottom of your screen is a couple miles per hour below the indicated speed on her dashboard. So when you can see that she's doing 20 on your screen, the display is actually showing 22, 23. So because of that, she picks up a driver fault for use of speed. Emily makes her life a little bit harder here. You can see there's a red car in lane one. And ideally, that's where we should be as we are going straight. But by being in lane two is not really an issue, but it depends on what she does next. As the traffic starts to move further forward, she then notices that the right lane is for people that are turning right. And she notices that the left lane is there. She tries to move across and there's a van coming up on her inside. So she stops, she allows the van to go past before she then moves across. Traffic light changes at this point and she does react really well, but as you can see, she gets very, very flustered. She starts making little random adjustments of the steering wheel, she looks around, she tries to gather some information from somewhere, but all of this is not really needed. She did the right thing, she stopped when the traffic light was red, so her reaction was good, and yes, she's straddling lanes, but it's not really an issue. So don't freak out when a situation like this happens because if you just stay composed and think, right, that's it, forget about it, you will then carry on to pass your test. If you get stressed out about this though, or you dwell on it, you'll probably make other mistakes later on, which could potentially cost you your test. So remember, don't fail yourself let the examiner make the decision. Just relax, think, right, I'm not going to do that again, and continue to drive. You will see the 20 sign on the floor here, and you can see that I'm leaning across to find out what speed she's doing. She then does realize by seeing the second road marking that this is actually a 20, and slows it down. If she continued to go over 20 at that second sign, she would have then got a serious fault. 
as it turns out, she had a driver fault there for use of speed again. What I'd like you to do now is reverse back two car lengths, keeping it close to the curb. For those of you that have watched my video on the pull up on the right reverse back to car lengths manoeuvre, you will remember that I've always stated to use a quarter of a turn to adjust. It just makes it a bit more definite and more locked in. Now Emily's observations are very good but her steering is a little bit suspect. She's doing too much with the wheel and she's actually bringing the car further away from the kerb as well. She is just within distance because of the width of this road. I've given her a driver fault for control, but ideally we should be within 30 centimeters of the curb. So again, don't overcomplicate your steer. Stick with the quarter turns, it will make your life easier. At this point, normally you'd go to the test centre, but we're not allowed in at this moment in time. Emily does well with her awareness of this pedestrian. I know it's not part of the test, but well done. How do you feel that went? I did pretty good. I thought there were some moments that I was like, yeah, I wish I'd done that bit better. Mm -hmm. Give me some examples. Oh, well, I didn't see that plan. <laughs> that was about to turn right. Yeah, so... With that, do you think serious or... Probably mindful? serious. Okay. But then I stopped it. I, you'd have to take over. And no one died. <laughs> yep. So do you think that was a major? Yeah, probably though. Oh. Okay. It was a minor fault. I gave you that as an observation fault for the end of the junction. You were committing before you could really see 100%. Mm -hmm. But you did see it and react. Okay. Okay, so... I've not had to do anything there. Okay. okay, so it's a driver fault rather than serious. Okay. okay, and then the other one was when I was trying to be good and change lanes and then change lanes and the lights changed. And then I felt like I was blocking everybody. Okay. But then but then I thought, well, the lights have changed so they're not gonna have to move anyway. Cool, so do you think that was a driver fault minor or a serious or dangerous fault major? Hoping that it was minor. Yeah. Okay, good. Now, it's really important and I've said this in so many videos before, do not fail yourself. Because as soon as that happened, you got really flustered. Yes. You were looking here, you were looking there, you were thinking, should I move forward, should I move there, should I do this? And then you just eventually just thought, you know something, I can't do anything. <laughs> I'm just gonna stay here, wait until the traffic light goes and then go. Yeah. That was fine. 
okay? Um, the movement that you went to move across before with the van coming up on the left-hand side, that was a bit tight. You were very close to getting a serious fault mm -hmm. there. Um, you should have just waited, let them go past and then go. You did again take control of the car, but that gap was already quite tight for them to fit through. Okay. okay. Um, in total, you got seven driver faults and that's it. Hey! Pass! Hey! <laughs> <laughs> so really well done, especially because we haven't really driven for quite some time. No. <laughs> okay, so really good. Um, the mirrors were really good. Good. Really, really, really good with really the mirrors. Tried. <laughs> yeah, no, they were on fire. You were checking all the time. You were aware of your surroundings as and when you needed to. Um, the Great Cambridge Roundabout was good. Um, would I have gone a little bit faster? Possibly myself. Um, but it didn't really make a difference <laughs> anyway. Um, you were fine at the end of the day with the Cambridge Roundabout. There was a few faults, so the seven driver faults, there was three for use of speed, so just going slightly over the speed limit. Yeah, I think there was one. Oh, that was another one. At that traffic lights when I was trying to change lanes to be helpful and then just wasn't. I think there was a 30 before that and then I didn't realise the road that we were going into was a 20. So I was like, oh, we're at 30. Oh, look at me for being clever and acknowledging that. And then it wasn't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so as you came through the junction, it was 20 signs in. I think it was because you were just so flustered thinking yeah. about what happened before. You did then see the 20 on the floor and you did slow it down. So I gave you that as a driver fault. There was a couple that you were yeah, yeah. slightly over um, that you were remedying yourself. Um, the driver fault for the observation we've already spoken about. Position on normal stops we've got to work on your parking yeah i'm not very good at that cool we're definitely <laughs> going to do some work on that I now i think that i was better at the pulling over on the right yeah <laughs> the thing with the pull up on the right okay now this could have been a serious fault yeah okay because you wasn't that impeding to other road users and your observations were good i gave you the benefit of the doubt on this one but that was too far from the curb Okay. Yeah, remember, right. you have to stay close to the curb. Yeah. So the examiner is looking for about 30 centimetres mm -hmm. maximum. I would say you were probably about 50 ish. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the road was wide enough that it wasn't impairing anyone else's position or impeding on anyone else's position. So I didn't give you that as a serious fault. If that was a narrower road, so if it was a road like this, that would have been a different situation. Yeah. Okay. Um, I actually think this one is quite good. Yeah, the position here is fine. Um, but we're definitely going to work on that pull up on the um, the left. Yes, please. Okay. Um, and the... Yeah, and the manoeuvre. So, being too far from the curb. Drive a fault. Uh, yes. Okay. The one. Yep, that's mm -hmm. it. Okay. Um, show me tell me the question on the move. That was fine as well. Okay, so well done. That was good. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you found that video helpful, please stick a like, um, subscribe, share like crazy. And if you'd like to do a mock test as well, feel free to contact me on this email here or give me a call or a text or WhatsApp on this phone number, and we'll try to get you in as soon as we can. It's normally about two to three weeks now um, at the moment, so please bear that in mind. If you have got a test next week, I'm not going to be able to fit you in that soon. But otherwise, stay safe and thank you again for watching.